praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. I said praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords. He is our strength. He is our help. He is our health. And he is the one who has brought us this far. And he is the one who is taking us into the new year. We are confident in him. Our trust is in him. God will not fail his people. God is a good God. Tonight is a very special night for each one of us. Because in just about 49 minutes from now, we will be entering a brand new year. The year 2024. And uh, tonight we have the honor and the privilege to be a people who saw the beginning of a year and are also seeing the end of the year. Some people think that is ordinary, but it is extraordinary to see the beginning of a year and see the end of the year because that privilege does not come easily to everybody. But thank God that we saw the beginning of this year and we are seeing the beginning of the next year as well. And he who will cause you to see the beginning of 2024 will also cause you next year by this time to see the end of 2024. God will give you a victory and God will watch over you and protect you. We are confident in the goodness of the Lord that his faithfulness never ends. So as we uh, close the page on one year and open the page for a brand new year, we take time to think about where God has brought us and to have faith for where he is taking us. God has brought us far and he will take us very far. And so today as I begin my uh, exhortation before we enter the new year, I want to turn to Psalm 136. And uh, appropriately I should be reading the whole of the psalm, but that is a little bit long and we don't have too much time to do all the things we have to do for the new year. So I'm going to read verses 1 to 9. And there is a pattern of praise and worship I want you to observe because we are also going to praise God in similar manner as we read in the Psalms. Psalm 136 verses 1 to 9. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercies endure forever. O oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercies endure forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, for his mercies endure forever. To him who by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endures forever. To him who laid out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endures forever. To him who made great lights, for his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endures forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endures forever. And you hear that refrain, for his mercy endures forever after every sentence. The Psalms, when we read the Psalms, we just read them as a message directly coming to us. But the Psalms normally were sung in procession. And they were sung most of the time when Israel or the people of God were going to the temple. And they would sing the Psalms and that would take them to the temple. And usually the Psalms will be made up of two parts. A leader who will sing one part and the people who will sing another part. So the leader would say something and the people will respond. So this is how this Psalm 
is structured. Uh, so the leader would say, oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good. And then the people respond, for his mercy endures forever. And he would say, uh, oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. And the people respond, for his mercy endures forever. So as we get ready to go into 2024, we want to give thanks to God for 2023 because his mercy endures forever. So I'm going to lead us into a similar call and response and when i make the call you all respond for his mercy endure forever are you ready for that are you ready to praise god to thank him for 2023 so oh give thanks to the lord for the year 2023 give thanks to the lord who caused us to gather in 2023 to the Lord our God who delivered us from destruction. To our Lord who caused us to rejoice and filled our mouths with laughter. To our Lord who comforted us in our times of pain and sorrow. To the Lord who is with us on the mountain and in the valley. To the Lord who is taking us into a brand new year. Give thanks to the Lord who is the king of the universe, the alpha and the omega, whose faithfulness is from generation to generation. For his mercy endures forever. Give the Lord a mighty hand. And it is through the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. It is through the mercies of the Lord that we have lived and to see this day. And it is by his mercy that we cross over into the new year. We cross over into 366 unknown days. Days that we have no idea would, and how they would look like. But those unknown days are known to God. Because known unto the Lord are the ends of the matter. He knows everything before it begins. There is nothing coming to you in 2024 that will be a surprise to God. There is nothing that the enemy has planned for you that God has not already outsmarted him concerning. Because the mercies of the Lord will take you from this year into the next year and the faithful God who is eternal will keep you into a brand new year. To guide our journey as a church, we focus our attention and our resources on a theme. And it's been something we've been doing for a very long time. I've had the privilege of leading people into a brand new year. I've been conducting these services for over 40 years, probably about 45 years. I've done it over and over and over. And one of the important tasks I cherish is being able to lead people into a brand new year. It's almost like a midwife delivering a baby into the world. It's almost like uh, God helping, using me to help us to bring something new into our lives. And we believe that God is going to guide us. Each year, I set out a theme that I believe captures the idea of what I hear God saying in my spirit for his people. In 2022, our theme was increase. In 2023, our theme has been gathering. And in 2024, our theme is God. He is the Alpha and the Omega He's the one who begins with us from the 1st of January 2024 to the, 20, to the 31st of December 2024. We believe God will make a way for each one of us and God will prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Our key text uh, as a church throughout ICGC for 2024 is the first verse of the Bible. Very simple enough, 
uh, verse, but it captures who God is. And it reads, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And you can be sure that I'm going to do a lot of work with that verse. God is the source of all things. He is the creator of all things. And he has made himself known to us. And he wants us to know him. And when you read the Bible, you see many people that God made himself known to. But one remarkable person that God made himself known to was a gentleman called Moses. Moses was a child of a peculiar circumstances. He was born in a very severe time when life was threatened by the Pharaoh of Egypt against every male born child. And he was a male born child. His life was definitely threatened and his parents thought of giving him a future so they gave him the opportunity and God worked it out so that Moses would be delivered and guess where God took him he took him to the camp of the person who wants to destroy him God has a good sense of humor when people have planned their destruction and they think you will hide from them he sneaks you into their presence and they don't even know you are there until you come to subvert and overturn the kingdom of the enemy. God will bring you into places where people have planned wickedness for you. But he would use you to overturn every plan of wickedness. Don't be surprised where God will put you next year. You will sit before people you know have daggers be behind them. They have nice to stab you, but God will sit you at their table because he's about to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. So Moses was in the camp of his destroyer, supposedly. And God eventually took Moses out. But Moses really encountered God on Mount Horeb when he was an old man in Exodus chapter 3. Verses 13 to 15. Moses appears to God and uh, God appears to Moses. Of course, he appeared uh, to God too. He showed himself to God. But God appeared to Moses and, 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 uh, and gave Moses a charge. But Moses was not really ready for the charge because the people he is about to give the charge to uh, are very stiff-necked people. So this is what Moses said in verse 13 of Exodus chapter 3. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Moreover, God said to Moses, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. This is my memorial to all generations. I want you to note the progression. Moses drew near to God and God drew near to him. And, and that's what we want to focus on, that our hearts will be drawn to the Lord and the Lord will draw close to us. And in that environment, God revealed himself to Moses in, a, in the most simplest of names. I am. What is your name? I am. In the Hebrew is a year. I think it's very close to Akan, a year. I am a year. It is from a root word that means to be. And it is God's proper name. It doesn't just describe him, but that is how he calls himself. I am. I am. God is. Who he is. He is the one who is. He is the one who is. God does not be.
become. God is. God does not become. He does not improve. He does not learn. He does not become better. He does not become more holy. He does not become more righteous. He does not become more powerful. Every human being improves. Because for human beings, we have three time zones. We have the past, we have the present, and the future. And because of this line of progression, we become better, we improve, we age, we become old. But God has no past and God has no future. God is. In the Hebrew, it's a perfect tense. God is. He is is. He's not was. He's not will be. He is is. So he says to Moses, I am. I am. What are you? I am your life. I am your health. I am your strength. I am your wisdom. I am your ability. I am your past. I am your present. I am your future. I am 2024. I am 2025. I am 2026. You are not there, but I am. You are getting there, but I am. Because whatever we will want to be, God is already there. There is nothing about your future that is a secret to God that God has to go and learn about. He knows the end from the beginning. I am. I am. And in 2024, we want to encounter I am. That is our mission as a church. To know God. To know the great I am. To know the one who is present at all times. Who has always been at all times. Who caused all things to be but has not been caused by anything. Who moves all things but is not moved. Who is at all times. There will never be a time God is not. God is always. And we want to know him. We want to know his person. We want to know his presence. We want to know his power. When you know him, you will know his glory. When you know him, you will experience his works. Don't go for his works. Go for him because his works come from him. When we know him, then we have his works. When we know him, we have his power. When we know him, we have his glory. When we know him, we have his beauty. Many times we are chasing for the things he does. But he said to Moses, he didn't say, I will do. He didn't say, I will be. He says, Moses, simply tell them, I am. So Moses, who is going to deliver us? I am. Who is going to destroy Pharaoh? I am. Who is going to take us through the wilderness? I am. Who will feed us through the wilderness? I am. When we come through the Red Sea and we don't know how to cross, who will help us? I am. When enemies confront us in the wilderness and we have no army and we have no weapons, how do we defeat them? I am. All that you expect, I am. And today I want to announce to you, this is the God you serve. This is the God you know. This is the God you pray to. This is the God you read about in the Bible. This is the God we have known from generation to generation. The great I am. And we have to learn about him. Live in his presence. In 2024, let God be God. When I announced the theme to our pastors, I said to pastors, stop playing God. Let God be God. And when we allow God to be God, even what we cannot do, he is. Once we understand that this is God's work, we don't have to put in effort 
to try to impress people about how much power we have because the power is his. The glory is his. The beauty is his. The anointing is his. Because I get the impression that many times pastors want to be God. We feel if we don't lay hands on people, they will not be healed. If we, we feel if we don't bless people, they will not be blessed. There is a place for us to lay hands on people. It's in the Bible we must do it. There is a place for us to bless people. In the Bible we must do it. But God will bless people whether we bless them or not. That is God. There was a time Moses was talking to God and he says, God, I'm tired. And if you lead those people, you'll be tired too. God says, okay, I'm going to help you. I want you to gather the people you think are potential leaders and I'm going to take what I put on you and I'll, I'll put it on them too. God is saying, whatever I did with you, Moses, I can do with 70 other people. And so people gathered and the spirit of God came upon them. And there are some people, some other guys who didn't come for the meeting. But the fact that they didn't come for the meeting does not mean God could not touch them. Although they couldn't come for that meeting, God still touched them. I just want you to know that God is who he is wherever you are at every time. I said God is who he is wherever you are at every time. That also means when you are doing bad, he is. When you are lying, he is. When you are stealing, he is. When you are deceiving, he is. Couples, when you are unfaithful, he is. Your wife is not there, but he is. Your husband is not there, he is. The pastor is not there, he is. The congregation are not there, he is. Where nobody can be, God is. Somebody say God is. He is the great I am. And he's there all the time. And it is this God that we trust to take us through the year 2024. Can I predict what 2024 would be? Can I prophesy? Because everybody prophesies on 31st December. So I have to prophesy too. And if this prophecy does not come to pass. Take this church. And burn it. God will still be God. That is one prophecy that will never fail. God will still be God. God will still be God in 2024. Can I even prophesy further? He'll be God in 2025. Can I prophesy further? He'll be God in 2026. Can I prophesy further? He'll be God in 2100. And he'll be God in 300. And he'll be God for a thousand generations, for a billion generations, for a trillion generations, heaven and earth will pass away, but he will still be God. That prophecy you can lock in your chop box because it will always come to pass. If you want a sure word of prophecy, God is God and he will always be God. God is God and he will always be God. He is God. He's been God this year. He'll be God next year. And because God is God and he'll be God every year and God at all time, I can rest in him. So the best year way to enter a new year, just be in God. Just rest in him. Just trust him. Will prices of foodstuffs increase? I don't know, but God will be God. Will there be money? I don't know. But God is God. Will the city somersault and somersault and somersault? I don't know. But God will be God. God is God. God is God. God is God at all times. 
When the oceans move, when the mountains move, when the heavens move, when economies tumble, God is God. The psalmist in Psalm 46 tells us from verse 1 to 3, God is our refuge and strength. A, pres a very present help in trouble. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though its waters roar and be troubled. Though the mountains shake with swelling. God is still God. If tomorrow we hear that the Ebri mountains are no longer there. They have now been moved into the Atlantic Ocean. God is still God. If we hear that, that Russia has launched a nuclear weapon. God is still God. If we hear, oh, something else has happened. God is still God. We don't know the future. But one thing we know without any shadow of doubt. God is is and he is always God and when your trust is in him then through all the changing scenes of life your rest is in who he is so I encourage you as we enter the new year trust in him he's your refuge from the storms of life he's your refuge from harm and attacks in him we are safe. In him, we have life. I cannot promise you that there will be no problems in 2024. I cannot promise you that you will not go through some valleys yourself. I cannot promise you that there may be some difficulties ahead of you. All I can promise you, I am. God is. And yeah, he's there with you. He will guide you. He will lead you. He will give you victory. He will fight your battles for you. He will destroy the weapons that have been formed against you. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. People can conspire behind your back, but God is. And he's there all the time. You don't need to know your enemy. You just need to know your defender. And when God is your defender, you may not know who comes against you. You just know who is for you. Because the scripture says, if God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for you, who? You don't need to know who can be against you. All you know, need to know is God is for me. God is. Will there be witches? I don't know. Maybe. But God is. Will people try to gossip about you? Yes, they will. But God is. Will there be times when you are broke? Yes. But God is. He's not broke. He's your supplier. He's your provider. He's your healer. He's your deliverer. Whatever you desire, he is. So as we enter a brand new year, 2024, it's the year of God. It's our God here. It simply means just rest in him. Be secured in him. Settle yourself in God. Have your peace in him. And nothing that the enemy does will be able to overthrow you. I believe that you are about to experience the most fulfilling, the most significant, the most consequential, the most, the most expressive year you have ever been in. If you think 2023 was good, wait for the next one coming. If you look back in your life and say, oh, 2010 was my best year. Look for what is coming. There is no year in your life, in your past, 
that will be greater than the one you are about to enter into. Because God is with you. And if we trust him, and if we look up to him, and if we look, uh, follow him, and, and follow his guide, and follow his wisdom, and, and, and just honor him, and, and love him, and, and worship him, and be in church, and be in the house of the Lord, and, and, and put ourselves in his hands. He will do for you what no man could ever dream of doing for you. So as we get ready to enter our God here, that is the word I want to bring to you. God is. God is. God is. He will not become. If he becomes, it means he changes. He has changed. He doesn't become. He doesn't learn new things. He doesn't learn from experience. On this earth, we say experience is the best teacher, not with God. There's nothing he learns to improve his knowledge. He is perfect without any blemish. Perfect in holiness. Perfect in might. Perfect in power. Perfect in wisdom. Perfect in knowledge. Nothing beats his mind. God is. And before we start praying towards the new year, it's important for us to have a relationship with this God. God is our creator. But the fact that he created us does not mean we have a relationship with him. For us to have a relationship with him, we have to choose to know this God. To have an encounter with him. And the way to do that is through Jesus Christ. And receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. In the Bible you find many people who did not know God but came to know him. Peter was a fisherman. Of course he was a good Jew but he didn't know God until he encountered Jesus on the lake of Galilee. The woman at the well had married five men. Thought her case was the worst case in the world. But she met Jesus and she met God. Saul of Tarsus murdered Christians. But he encountered God through Jesus Christ. Because meeting Jesus makes all the difference. So tonight before we enter the new year. I want you to enter knowing this God, not as the God people talk about, but the God you know for yourself. The God who lives in you, the God who talks to you, the God whose voice you can hear, the, vo the God who's, whose hand you can see. So before we start praying to enter the new year, if you are here this night, we have just about 15 minutes to go into the brand new year. If you are here this night and you say, Pastor, I want to know God. And people say, well, everybody knows God. Everybody knows about God. Just like everybody know, in this auditorium or in this arena knows about me. But not everybody knows me because... Although you know about me, you know his name is Pastor Mesa Otabel. He is a general overseer of ICGC. He's the one standing there preaching and uh, he has a white beard and all of that. But it does, that's just facts about me, but you don't have a relationship with me. Only a few people know me because they have a relationship with me. And the same thing with God. People know God. Yes, he's the creator, he's the Alpha and Omega, he's the, oh, he's a God, he's mighty, he's, but they don't have a relationship with him. God is far from them. And tonight, God can be close to you. So whilst we are sitting down with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you are here this evening, just before we enter the brand new year, our God year, and you say, Pastor, I want to know God closely. I want to be close to God. I, I want to have a relationship with him. I don't want him to be far. I want him to be close to me. 
with every head bowed, every eye closed. If that is your prayer, you say, I want to be close to God. I want to go know God. I want to be born again. I want Jesus to come into my heart. I want to have a relationship with God. If that's your prayer, that's your desire, lift up your hand wherever you are. Just lift up your hand. God bless you. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. I see hands up. If that's your desire, just let your hand go up. Don't feel shy. Don't be embarrassed. That just let your hand be up. The ushers are going to give you a form. If you receive one, you can put your hand down. Ushers, please note those with their hands up. Save them quickly. Wherever you are, way back there. Wherever you are. If you want to have this relationship with God, just let your hand go up. I see hands up that are still up. Ushers, please, let's be fast about this. Now, those of you with your hand up, I want you to put your hand on your heart. Put your hand on your heart because you're going to pray a very important prayer that will help you to know God. And all of us are going to join you in that prayer. Let's pray together. Let's say, Heavenly Father, I come to you today just as I am. I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. I thank you, Father, that you became a man to die for my sins, that through your sacrifice, I will have new life. Today, I open my heart to you. Come into my heart. Change my life. Make me a brand new person. From today, I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. I thank you, Father, for the free gift of salvation, which I now receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.